Hello and welcome to my piano quick tips video number three. These videos are all about those bits of information that you can put into practice straight away. So don't forget to subscribe for more. Let's jump straight into it. Now, when you're playing a piece of music, when you're making up a piece of music, most of the time we stick to common time signatures. Three, four, 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 even two, four, they're standards. You can have six, eight, Sounds pretty good, a little bit of a party feel, but what we really want is something exciting, something engaging, and there's a reason why Mission Impossible sounds so good. Mission Impossible, of course, sounds like this. And so on and so forth. Why does that sound so great? Well, that's because it's in 5-4, five, five beats in every bar, and that's sort of a weird concept to get your head around because people are so used to 4-4 four, four and staying with a regular time signature. That means that we do have to start thinking about the way we play in a slightly different way. So for example, when you play 5-4, you can either count to five, or you could count one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And I find that when you make smaller chunks, everything becomes a lot easier. So for example, let's do a piece in 7-8. To get 7-8 stuck in my head to begin with, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna count one, two, one, two, one, two, three, to make up seven beats. And the best way I can do that is to play one, two, one, two, one, two, three. I could just do that. Let's get rid of a D, I think I prefer a C there. Yeah, that works. With the same concept, I could play a piece in nine eight. I could go one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three to get the nine, or I could go one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, three. So three bunches of twos and one bunch of three. I could do the same for 11, eight, 13, eight, all those sorts of things where you've got those irregular numbers. And as soon as you shrink it down into twos and threes, the patterns become so much easier to process. So here's the challenge, making the left hand then fit in with what the left hand is doing so that your time signature makes sense and works accurately. The best way we can do this is by making sure that the pattern that we play on the right hand has a significant ending to it. So when I'm doing one, two, one, two, one, two, three for my seven, eight time signature, the last note I've got is a C, so I know that's when I'm going to be playing the left hand straight afterwards for the repeat of the bar, like this. I don't really even have to think about it. I don't think about it in seven, eight. I just think as soon as I hear that, I'm playing the left hand. And immediately you've got a piece of music that sounds more exciting. It sounds more engaging because people don't do it. People don't play, people don't improvise, people don't create music as much as they should do in these irregular time signatures because people so often get put off by the concept of feeling out of time. And yet you listen to Mission Impossible and it, it sounds regular, it works really well. And that's in 5-4. And you don't realize it until you count it. And you can see how it works. It's in 5-4 and it's got a great melody. So put it into practice. Put in this concept of counting irregular time signatures in smaller denominations to get better results. So let me know if that made sense. The concept is quite simple, but in practice it's quite challenging. So put a bit of work into this so that irregular time signatures are no longer a challenge to play. But in any case, if you've got any questions, any comments, put them below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel because tomorrow I'll be releasing another quick tip video and maybe even a new piece of music. Stay tuned.